Okay, so we're going to move on now to part B. So for part B, what we've been asked to do is to show this result. We've got to show that a Cartesian equation of the curve is given by this expression here, where x lies between minus 1 and 1 x must lie between minus 1 and 1 by the way because otherwise this square root would become uh, impossible to do would have a negative uh, value in there okay so you might like to uh, pause the video and uh, see how you get on uh, come back uh, to check your answer okay welcome back let's see how you got on with this one Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, just by saying that since y equaled, uh, we were given that y was equal to the sine of t plus pi upon 6. I'm going to use this and I'm going to expand it. So hopefully you remember the expansion of the sine of a plus b. It was the sine of a cos b plus sine b cos a. Okay, so if I expand that I'm going to therefore have that y equals the sine of t cos of pi upon 6 and then it will be plus the sine of pi upon 6 and then the cos of t. Okay, now we should know what the cos of pi upon 6 is and the sine of pi upon 6 from the usual triangle giving the ratios that we had earlier. So the cos of pi upon 6 is root 3 upon 2, so that's root 3 upon 2. Write that in first, then times sine of t. And then the sine of pi upon 6 is a half, so we can say that that's plus a half cos t. Okay, now I know that sine t is x, but I don't know what cos t is. Remember sine t was x because we were given that at the beginning uh, as being one of the parametric uh, components. So I've got to get cos t now in terms of x, and I can do that if you know your identities. I just Let's just open the margin. I can use the identity that sine squared, let's say sine squared t plus cos squared t equals 1. And if I rearrange for cos t, we'll just go uh, by saying cos squared t first of all, cos squared t will be 1 minus sine squared t. And then if I square root both sides, I'm going to therefore have that cos t equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared t. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pop that into here so we'll have that this equals the root 3 upon 2 sine t and then plus a half times the square root and put in brackets there 1 minus sine squared t. So we know that x was sine t, or sine t was x uh, from the beginning, so I'll say here, but sine t equals x, so therefore we have that y equals root 3 upon 2, sine t, which is now x, plus a half, and then the square root of 1 minus sine squared t, but sine t you remember is x, so that's going to be x squared. And there we have it. That is proved, and that's the end of question 4. So I hope you got that. If you did, that question, or that part of the question I should say, is worth 3 marks, so well done.